And we're back for another episode of the Post Money Plan Podcast. My name is Dallas Post, and I am your host. As you know, I believe empowerment comes through knowledge, so my purpose here is to inform, educate, and stimulate thought within personal finance, economics, and investing. You can find me at postmoneyplan.com or search the Post Money Plan in the iTunes podcast app or in Google Play. All right, so this one's going to be a little bit weird for me because I don't I don't have a guest this week, and I'm essentially doing this talking to myself, so I feel a little bit funny about it. But I'm going to start 2018 off with a review of 2017 for myself, especially from the topic of being an entrepreneur. So even though this is a little off topic, I thought it might be helpful for other aspiring entrepreneurs and also just for goal setting and that kind of stuff in general as well. So I wanted to take time to review my 2017 goals, my year as an entrepreneur, and my plans for the post money plan. The big struggles as an entrepreneur, the way I see it, is that you have to be a complete self-starter. Without people telling you what to do, you don't have anyone guiding you, and it's all up to you, basically. Versus when you're an employee at a job, your boss and people above you are going to tell you what to do exactly. You don't necessarily have to be a self-starter. You can just do whatever you're told, and you'll get the job done. But as an entrepreneur, there's no one there directing you, so if you're not doing it yourself you're not getting anything done. So the big thing from my perspective is you have to stay focused and you could end up going in a million different directions, but you have to set your objectives of what exactly it is you want to accomplish. And then you have goals that'll keep you oriented on those objectives to help you stay focused. That's kind of what I did on a personal level that bled into the professional level with my pursuits in the post money plan. So then let me walk you through my 2017 goals and what I was doing there and how the process went and all that kind of stuff. So the way I set things up for myself at the end of 2016, looking forward to 2017, I started with categories to keep balance and well-roundedness for myself. So I started thinking in terms of having spiritual objectives, mental objectives, physical objectives social objectives, and then professional and financial objectives. So I had five categories there, spiritual, mental, physical, social, and professional. Then with those categories, what I did is I came up with overarching objectives in those categories to help orient me to identify specific goals that I thought would help me meet those objectives. And the whole purpose of this exercise is as an entrepreneur, I'm out on my own, No one's telling me what to do unless I set my own goals and orient myself on what I'm going to do. So this was the guiding force for me to stay on task, do what I'm trying to do so that I don't end up in the wilderness, which is very easy to happen as an entrepreneur. I'm not going to take the time to go into every specific personal goal that I set for 2017, but I will talk about the professional and financial ones. But just as an overview of how I wrapped up my analysis of my 2017 goals and results, I set six professional goals, which I felt like I only had 50% success on. Overall, I would say that of the goals that I set for myself in 2017, I felt like I had 60% success on my goals for the year. To delve more specifically into what my professional goals were, I'll give you a little bit about what I was thinking in terms of the post-money plan. My first goal for the post money plan was to grow my website visits by 10% a month. I started the beginning of the year or December 2016 with 347 unique visitors and 881 visits to the website. So I was starting from a fairly small base, but my goal there was to grow it by 10% a month. So what ended up happening is that I actually finished December 2017 with 1,767 unique visitors and 9,365 visits. So that averaged out to a growth of 18.5% a month on unique visitors and 29% a month on visits. Or compounded, it was 14.5% per month on unique visitors and 22% on visits. So I actually had 100% success on that goal. I was happy about that. And on reflection, I feel like what I did right there was that I routinely put out a podcast every single Wednesday all year. So I ended up putting out 52 podcasts over the course of 2017. 
and I also wrote about 50 articles for the year. But I had very modest social media involvement and activity. The consistent content seems important, but I could have marketed and promoted a lot better. So looking forward to 2018, I'll try to continue to do the same thing, but have more involvement in social media and more marketing involvement. My second goal for the Post Money Plan was to begin generating revenue. And my thinking there was that I was going to grow traffic to the website and then market to advertisers and thought I'd make money from advertising. But in reality, I only made a few bucks from that, so I would consider that a 0% success. And to reflect on that, I realized that you have to generate a ton of website traffic to make money purely from website advertising these days. Plus, I didn't actually attempt to sell anything when it comes down to it. I was just putting out podcasts and articles for free on my website to generate traffic, but I didn't actually try to sell anything directly. So I haven't put out any premium content yet, even though that was part of the plan. So going forward, I have to have a plan to promote products that people will pay for. So that's my uh, takeaway there. My third goal for the Post Money Plan was to take on a partner for the business. Again, back at the beginning of the year, I was thinking that I was going to go the venture capital route and scale a business with hyper growth before profit and go that whole route. But I ended up not taking on a partner. So I guess you could call that 0% success. But just to look back at it, I actually decided to change my approach for the business from a venture capital hyper growth before profit type model to a much more conservative profit into slow growth type business model. So I decided not to attempt to even take on a partner until I have something tangible to offer. And that way, when I'm generating a modest profit, I can actually reach out to someone who I want to take on as a partner and have something to offer to them. My fourth and final goal for the Post Money Plan in 2017 was to raise $500,000 in funding. Now, this was my most ambitious goal and would have been a pretty overwhelming task no matter how you slice it but it pretty much ended up the same way as the partner goal. I plan to go the venture capital route, scale the business with hyper growth via outside funding before profit. In reality, I did not take on a partner and then I also did not fundraise at all. So you could say I had 0% success on that goal. But when it comes down to it, what I've been providing so far in terms of financial education has been more of a service rather than a product. And the thing is, a product business is much more easily scalable than a service business. So I realized that it would be very difficult to raise funding and go the whole venture capital route via a service-oriented business as I have been approaching it. What I plan to do going forward is not raise any outside funding until I'm generating a modest profit. And I'm going to do that via packaging the financial education that I offer into a product format via online courses. So I'll do that, attempt to generate a modest profit, and then as opportunity permits, then I'll look to see if I should go for outside funding at a later point in time. So those were my professional goals for the Post Money Plan, but I also have two personal financial goals that I set for 2017. And the one was to live on less than $33,000 for the year, which comes out to about $2,750 a month. What I ended up doing was setting a budget that would put me on track for more on the order of $29,000 for the year. But in reality, I only ended up spending about $25,300 in 2017, which comes out to about $2,100 a month, a little over that. And that even includes about $3,400 in post-money plan related expenses. So that was 100% success on that goal, and I did really well on the spending category. I think I did a, a great job of living without buying unnecessary things, living modestly, and just not spending money uh, wastefully. The biggest amount of discretionary money that I spent money on that I could adjust my behavior or change in the future would be on eating out a bunch. If I were to make more meals, then I could definitely save money on that. I would definitely say that Mint.com helps you to easily keep track of your finances with all your accounts merged into one place, and it helps you also learn your spending habits and then adjust for the future. So definitely check out Mint and use that if you're not using it. 
My other personal financial goal for the year was to gain 20% on my investments. Over 2017, the stock market via the S&P 500 actually had a phenomenal year. It went up almost 20% for the year, so the stock market itself went up a ton. But the big news for the year was really cryptocurrencies. The good news for me was that I not only put money in stocks, but I also put money in Ether. So I actually ended up losing money on a retail stock earlier in the year and making a, a misstep on that, <laughs> not thinking of the danger of Amazon eating up the market share of brick and mortar stores. But since I had put some money into Ether in 2016, I ended up with a 600% gain on my total portfolio. So I actually had 100% success on that goal. But the thing was, that was super, super lucky and not because I'm smart or anything. It was just uh, very fortunate in terms of timing and like a once in a lifetime kind of benefit. And just to try to reflect on what went right, I would say there there's a huge benefit in considering the psychology of people in the marketplace and investors and not just looking only at the fundamentals. And then the other thing that helped me with the Ether situation is that I could have easily sold way back at the beginning of the year when I had tripled my money or whatever. But I had firm confidence in the underlying thesis that helped me to have resolve when things got shaky or the market kept going up, but I felt like things hadn't reflected my underlying thesis of why I made the investment in the first place. So that helped me to stay put even though the market was moving a bunch. The other thing that I would say is that my being open to taking risks opened me up to opportunities and losses. So you know, there's two sides to the coin all the time. If you never take a risk, you're never going to open yourself up to the opportunity either. So there's two ways to look at it. Definitely, like everything can come and go very quickly. So in 2018, crypto could completely crash and all that wipe away. But the good thing was I sold off some of it and cashed in a bunch at the end of 2017. So I was able to realize that profit. Anyway, so those were my goals for 2017, and overall, I felt like the goals really helped orient me and keep me on task. Even though I didn't have 100% success on my goals, they did help me to stay focused and keep on track to the purposes that I was intending for the beginning of the year and not getting lost. Looking forward to 2018, I pretty much did the same exercise and just updated based on new information. So again, I won't go into all the personal details, but let me just share my professional goals that I set for 2018. The big one that I really want to accomplish is to launch the online beginner investing course, which will be called Invest Pain Free. I'm really excited about this course. It's going to be at investpainfree.com. This will be a way that I will monetize the post money plan and to start generating revenue. This will be an online course that will teach people who don't know anything about finance a step-by-step -step process to set up and automate your saving and investing. So I'm really excited about this because I don't see a lot of that out there and people get overwhelmed by the whole concept of dealing with their finances and starting to invest and all that stuff. And I feel like this really serves that segment of the market. It's going to help people make it super simple and get set up the way basically professionals are. So I'm really excited about it. I'm in progress on the course right now. I hope to have a beta launch in the coming months. And like I said, that'll be investpainfree.com. My second goal for the year is to generate $25,000 in sales. And I plan for most of that, if not all of that, to come from the Invest Pain Free course. So in order to generate that revenue, I'm targeting that I'm going to have to make about 90 sales of the course. So if I start selling in March, that means I have to make about 10 sales per month in order to meet that goal. In order for me to do that, I'm definitely going to have to market the Invest Pain-Free course aggressively, put it out there, really hone in on my target market of people who don't really care about the details of finances, but just want to know that they're doing the right thing and get set up. Anyway, my third goal is to continue with the growth in the Post Money Plan website traffic but I'll kick it down to a goal of 7% a month. So my starting point for 2018 is 1,767 unique visitors and 9,365 visits. 
So I'm hoping I can finish December 2018 at just a little under 4,000 unique visitors and a little over 21,000 visits. I'm going to continue with consistent content and try to get a little more aggressive with marketing and social media interaction. My fourth goal is to launch another online course with a partner on contests and how to win contests. This will be an addition to my online course offering of the Invest Pain Free course. And like I said, it will teach people a step-by-step -step process of how to win contests and get free stuff. So that'll be another course I can put together, market and sell, and add to my portfolio of course offerings. So those are my entrepreneurial goals. And then on the personal side, I want to continue with the conservative expenses and live on less than $30,000 for the year, which would be $2,500 a month. And like I said, in 2017, I spent $25,300, but I anticipate my expenses to go up some, but I still want to be conscientious of my spending. So my target is to live on less than $30,000 for the year, for 2018. My second personal goal is to pay off $20,000 of my student debt that I still have hanging around from my master's degree, and I want to get rid of that and pay that down. So I'm going to take some of the money that I've made from Ether and pay that off in one big slug. The same as 2017, I want to, again, gain 20% on my investments and continue building my investment portfolio. But now when I'm analyzing my performance, I'm going to consider the stocks and crypto separately since crypto is so volatile. And these last two goals are a little bit more obscure side projects. I want to add 20 pages to my economics treatise. This is a very long-term side project. I've been working on a manuscript to author a book on economics and the idea here would be to establish a more optimal philosophical framework for macroeconomic thought that pursues the betterment of humanity through value creation. I just feel like a lot of the economic philosophy that's used nowadays in economic policy is suboptimal. The thing that really spurred me to start this project was the 2016 presidential election and all the debate that was going on. I really just started to think that a lot of the debate that happened during that election and most elections, from an economic perspective, both sides of the debate are wrong or at least are looking at it from the wrong perspective, in, in my humble opinion. So that just got me thinking a lot on what would be the optimal way to think about things from a political and economic perspective. So that's what got me taking notes and eventually putting that into a Word document and turning it into a manuscript that hopefully can eventually turn into a book. I didn't really put that much time into it in 2017, but I want to add at least another 20 pages to my notes in 2018. So we'll see how that goes. My last personal goal is to create a decision tool website or app. This is, again, another side project that is just kind of for fun. The idea there, it was basically an app or a website that would help people make life decisions. So I've kind of thought about this for myself and used a rudimentary version of this for myself in making some personal decisions. But the idea here would be a proprietary quantitative algorithm that would help people think more rationally or logically about major life decisions instead of thinking so emotionally about these major decisions in their lives. I feel like that would be really useful for people and that people might appreciate that. So that's an, another side project that I'm hoping I can work on. So anyway, hopefully this personal reflection and almost public diary is helpful to other entrepreneurs out there. Otherwise, I'll just use it as my own personal reflection and look back at this at the end of the year and see how I've come. Not only will my personal goals hold me accountable to myself, but now by publishing this as a public podcast, you can keep me accountable too. I'd like to hear what you guys end up setting for yourselves in your 2018 professional goals and let me know how that goes. Go ahead and get yourself started out right in 2018 by setting your professional and financial goals and start out on the right foot. Catch you next time on another episode of the Post Money Plan Podcast.